Welcome everybody. I am so excited to have Tara Foley here. She is a wonderful person and the founder and CEO of Folane, which is a clean makeup and skincare retailer and brand. Tara, welcome. Thank, thank you so you much so, for being here. Thank you so much for having me. I'm a huge, huge fan of Get Weldy. Oh, thank you. Well, likewise. So um, for those of you who are not familiar with Folane, um, I just can't speak highly enough of them. But essentially, I always tell people it's kind of like a clean Sephora um, in the sense that they stock a lot of different, um, you know, clean beauty brands and have a rigorous vetting process of what they'll allow in their stores as well as their own products. And um, fi I find that everything in there works beautifully. The ambiance is lovely. There are freestanding stores as well as a website. Mm -hmm. So. Anyway, super excited about this. Thank you. So today I want to talk about how that really relates obviously to our health mm -hmm. and protecting our health as well as trying to, you know, clean up your life when you might have some chronic health issues that mm -hmm. you're trying to reverse. And so the issue of toxins in our consumer products is one of the most important health issues today. And how did you come to care about it enough to actually dedicate your life to it and start a brand in the space? So it's a great question. I actually kind of similarly to you, Adrian, I was starting to focus on my own health and wellness for the very first time. This was when I was fresh out of college, actually. Um, years ago, I was living here in New York. This was 2008 and I was in a job that I hated, basically. And the only thing that felt really good was taking care of myself. So starting to cook for myself, starting to really focus on fitness and nutrition. I was practicing yoga every day. I was racing triathlons. I was getting pretty extreme with the health and wellness wow. stuff. Um, but in my research for basically how to take care of myself, I started to even just skim the surface with products, with beauty products, um, skincare products, makeup, um, these products that I had been using my entire life and loved. And I had no idea that they contained a ton of just very, very harmful ingredients, harmful for people, harmful for the planet, harmful in every capacity. And so I was fresh out of college again with a public policy degree and probably a little bit more of an activist spirit than I realized. And I started reading about how there were these basically toxic ingredients lurking in my everyday products. And I got really fired up. And so I started writing a blog um, after my day job. And that basically kind of consumed me. I was telling my my friends and my family members and pretty much everybody who would listen, have you ever turned around the ingredients on your skincare products, your beauty products, and actually read them and thought about what was in them? And people obviously said no, because <laughs> this was 2008 and like the conversation hadn't really started. Um, and, and basically, you know, it got me so fired up, um, that, you know, that there was no conversation. And so I wanted to start it. I knew that there needed to be a business to implement change because no changes have been made, uh, to policy or regulation since 1938 when it comes to the ingredients in skincare and beauty products. Um, and so I decided that I wanted to get into, um, build or join a business that was trying to make change. So, yeah. That's how it started. It started from probably more anger <laughs> um, and passion than anything. Yeah. And, um, and it's been a wild ride. Yeah, I was just gonna say when you said, um, I love when people start businesses, when they see a problem that policy is just not responding to quickly enough, yep. or the entrenched interests are just so powerful, they mm -hmm. think it's going to be a very long time before that's yes. undone. And so this is a perfect example of that beauty is a trillion dollar global industry. Yep. Um, it's one of the, It's people say it's recession proof, right? Because even when people have no money, they'll spend $20 to make themselves feel yep. a little bit more beautiful with a lipstick or something like yep. that. And so it's something that these conglomerates are really not trying to make more expensive or change or have these a lot, you know, these um, requirements put in as far as what they can put in people's skin. It would skin. be bad for business if they did. One of the biggest beauty conglomerate CEOs actually just was making headlines last week saying that pollution is really good for his business because, uh, and Instagram filters are really good for his business. And, and anyhow, these types of things, they still happen and it's, and it's crazy. And so basically what the big beauty industry is doing is saying you need to look a certain way. And by the way, you need to use all of these toxic, awful ingredients to get there. And that at the core is incredibly disrespectful to women. And, um, 
And anyhow, and it's just going to continue to be that way um, as long as the companies are allowed to use these incredibly cheap ingredients because these ingredients are in there, you know, for preservation or performance, um, but they necessarily they don't necessarily do anything for you. And, and ultimately, a lot of the times that they, they can be incredibly harmful. How has the movement around clean skincare and makeup yep. changed since you first started thinking about this in 2008? Oh, a lot. <laughs> it's changed immensely. I mean, honestly, when I first started thinking about this, there were so few brands out there that were trying to make a change. I started getting into the space in 2008, started the blog in 2009, opened our first store in 2013. And when I opened our first store, we only had 10 brands. I mean, very few of these brands even existed then. Um, it's been amazing to watch the change over the years. And basically as customer, excuse me, consumers have become more and more passionate and more and more educated, they've started to demand better choices. Um, and so that leads to a few things that leads to some of the bigger companies starting to clean up their act and creating lines and products that are one off like better for people and planet. But it also led to, um, the development of more green chemistry, more innovation when it comes to kind of effective, clean ingredients and products. And so over the years, now you see like a new clean beauty brand every single day. Um, but it was really amazing to kind of watch that process over the years because it was truly because of these informed women and mothers, um, you know, basically like pounding their fists and saying, no, we deserve better. We're in a much better spot now. There's still a lot of greenwashing and there's still like atrocious stuff like that happening every single day. We actually call it clean washing because um, anyhow, but we could go into that. Yeah, that but, was my, that was one of my <laughs> questions I wrote down was, it seems to me there is a lot of clean washing, yeah. green washing, wellness washing, not only with the beauty and skincare industries, but also with food and, you know, 100%. all this, you know, a lot of amazing marketers. You know, I always say I went to a really good marketing business school, yes. right? And I think the top of our class all took jobs at Frito-Lay, mm -hmm. General Mills, Unilever, whatever. So the best of the best are figuring out how to sell this, you know, yep. toxic stuff. And so we're all up against some smart cookies. So is their greenwashing or their cleanwashing working? I think that what they do just works in general. So one of the things that um, the clean and green and natural side of the beauty industry, and I actually think of food, of everything, um, gets there kind of, you know, people get upset with us is that we're too serious or not fun enough. And it, it's not like, especially for beauty, it's not fun enough, right? And so it's not focused on pop culture. It's not focused on, you know, the things that advertising of big, you know, big businesses um, in the CPG space has been built on. And so I think one of the things that they're doing is they're, um, they're doing just a really great job at what they do with advertising. And I think that, you know, people are, are buying into products saying, you know what, we don't really care if it's clean or green. We want to buy into a feeling of fun. Into, so that's one of the things that I think, honestly, that the clean and green and natural side of the industry really could learn from is like using the best of the best, um, you know, from those big companies you just mentioned, um, using those frameworks and tactics and applying them to the, the products that we're selling, because ultimately that's the only way that we're going to get more people into this movement and more people using these products. Because I mean, there aren't enough people using these products right now, full stop. And so I don't know if it's because we're all staring at our belly buttons and only talking to certain parts of the country. I don't know if it's because we're not fun enough, but um, if we need to use those tactics and um, those types of ads that the big companies are using, so be it, you know? Right. Um, but yeah, there is there is a lot of clean washing and green washing, um, obviously. But the thing is, is like you have to know whose standards you're on board for to know um, personally what that means to you. Right, so you mentioned to me before we started filming yeah. a statistic around how many people are using this. So it's around five, it's right now around 5% of, of, in the US of consumers are opting in for products that are branded or claimed to be clean. And that's staggering. That is. I mean, that's crazy. To me. The, it's nothing. The, <laughs> to me, the, the beauty and skincare component of what it takes to actually prevent chronic health issues and you know really clean up your body yeah. if you are dealing with something to allow your immune system to really attack it right yeah. so the idea is in general what, what we've seen works for people to to really heal some sort of chronic thing or just to prevent it mm -hmm. is really about reducing your toxic burden and yeah. that's everything from negative 
thoughts Absolutely. and stressors over to, you know, a large part of it is what you put in your mouth and also mm -hmm. what you put on your body. And so to me, that is the easiest thing to go. I mean, it's very hard, totally. you know, let's say you're with the food stuff, sometimes there just isn't clean stuff available and yep. you have to make hard choices or you have stressors in your life that are very hard to undo or childhood traumas, whatever. You can't control the air outside your building. Right. You can control what you choose to put on your yep. face. And so to me, I, just the 5% number just fires me up. Me there's too, so much believe work to me. Do. There's so much work to do. And that's what honestly fuels us. And that's what we're so passionate about doing is at Full Lane is making it as easy as possible for people to start that journey, to start trying cleaner products. And I mean, people will ask us, okay, where should I begin? When we say soap, it's always a shock because we're known for skincare and makeup and all these fun, you know, parts of um, parts of clean beauty. But we always tell people it's soap. It's the easiest thing. It's like what you use most frequently throughout the day. Um, it's usually what's creating the most waste in terms of environmental impact. And the ingredients in soap, like they're usually packed with um, synthetic fragrance. They're packed with SLS and some of those foaming agents, which um, I could go into detail about all these ingredients. For people that might be in that exact yeah. spot that you're talking about, like I'm just starting, okay, I'm convinced. Now, what do I start with first? Uh -huh. And so soap, that's a great example. Soap is so easy. From there, we usually say, most people have heard about deodorant, the issues with deodorant. That's, mm -hmm. that's a really important one. From there, we also say um, anything that kind of covers the majority of the surface area of your body. So if you're like a big makeup user like me, I needed to switch makeup very early in my journey. If you're somebody who uses shave cream every day, or if you're somebody who uses a ton of like lotion on your, you know, your body, which by the way, from your neck down is 90% of the surface area of your body. So lotion's important. Um, sunscreen is up there. So so basically what I'm saying is start with soap, deodorant, um, any kind of moisturizers or makeup that cover you know, your whole body and sunscreen are good places to start. Right, and so the ingredients, if you had to kind of choose the, let's say three to yeah. five most toxic in those you know, lotions, yes. deodorants, sunscreens, soap, what would those Fragrances be? Fragrance is, is the one that I get most fired up about <laughs> because um, as we mentioned, there's a lack of regulation in the beauty industry in the US. The biggest issue out of all of those is fragrance in that it's considered still a loophole. Um, it's considered a trade secret in the in the US. So basically, you can have up to 10,000 or so ingredients inside of the word fragrance. So if you go home and read pretty much any product you have on your shelf, um, usually from the conventional space, and it says fragrance or parfum on it, you have no idea what what's inside of that. So that can be thousands and thousands of ingredients, usually petroleum based ingredients, which again, like very harmful for the environment, but also like no good for us, right. but also tons and of also carcinogens. Petroleum is, is oil. Yeah. Let's, yeah, oh, yeah, Cause yeah. some people are like, Oh, oh yeah. whatever that means. Oh, like, yes. No. Yes. Petrochemicals. Yes. yes. I mean, there can be potential carcinogens in there. There can be tons of very, very harmful ingredients inside of that little word fragrance. So that's probably the most offensive out of all of them. Other ingredients that I would say to avoid, I mentioned before SLS, um, sodium laureth sulfate. So that's basically the ingredient that makes products um, foam and suds, mm -hmm. which is again, not necessary. That yes. probably came out of somebody from a great marketing program at a business school because it was basically created, I mean, decades ago by a company. Um, and then they made you think, okay, you need to have a big foamy sudsy experience to get yourself clean. But not only is that not true at all, but it's also drying your skin, potentially irritating your skin, and it's also been linked to all of those other things I said for long-term health issues. So, um, and it leads to, it potentially will create 1,4-dioxane. And so there's just, there's tons and tons of issues. So instead of looking for ingredients to avoid, I encourage people to, to shop from brands or even build your own products. Think of it from the other side, basically. Try and think of it in like a way that it's healthy and it's wholesome and it's coming from a place of good. So if you read an ingredient label, it should be fairly short and it should be fairly recognizable, right? That type of, it's the same thing as food. So exactly. I yeah. just think that instead of looking for ingredients to avoid, I would find brands and products and ingredients that you know you trust and that you know work well for your body specifically and just stick with them. Yeah, and just from the health perspective, like things that are carcinogenic are, yeah. you know, for anybody who doesn't know that word and I don't want yeah. anyone to feel stupid, that's cancer causing, yeah. right? 
and endocrine disruption, I think that term gets thrown around a lot, but it's important to realize like how deep that actually goes in the different systems of the body. So hormone disruption, hormones are very linked to gut health. Gut health is the foundation of all human health as we now know it. And so when your gut is out of whack, your hormones are out of whack, you can disrupt your thyroid function, your adrenal function, Mm -hmm. all of these, it's a cascading series of events. And so it goes the other way too. When you have hormone disruption, it can lead to developmental issues. There's the gut brain connection. That's why a lot of these products for pregnant women are not allowed yeah. because then as it gets in utero, then it affects a fetus's brain. The, the possibilities on and on and are on. <laughs> endless, you know, and yeah. then that child is medicated and then yeah. those medications have serious side effects. So the, the, it sounds like a small thing to do. Like what's the big deal about putting, you know, my favorite bronzer on mm-hmm. every day. I mean, there's no way this is going to be the thing that takes me down. And yet Yep. It has so many implications for human health, like all throughout the different systems within your and body. And the thing is, is it's never just bronzer, you know? So your women are using like over upwards of 10, 15 products a day. And, and, and so bronzer is one product in your whole lineup of your toothpaste, your deodorant, your hair, do- like, you know, go right. down the list. Right. And so, and that, that adds up to a pretty serious toxic burden Right. And these are ingredients that are bioaccumulative. Your body does not know how to break them down and they're with you forever. That's on top of the rest of the toxic situation of just living in 2019 yeah. Yeah. and, you know, walking breathing down the, the street, bringing the, breathing the <laughs> smog with yeah. all the, you know, cars outside. Yeah. It's, you know, when you, you, you are in an airport, you really can't use anything but that, you know, toxic soap. And sure. so you're already being exposed. So the least you can do is what you can control at home and with your own products yeah. should be, you know, the stuff that's not causing harm. And, and as, as I would always say, like at what cost, you yeah. know, like, is it really that big? deal to have that exact thing that you have always been using like at what cost and also as you were saying there's so many excellent other choices that work just as well and I love seeing the back of a simple ingredients list that might have you know one ingredient face oil that has just you know and it's something nourishing as you're saying like products that relate to beauty and skin they don't have to be toxic and they can also actually be nourishing with things like avocado and that's the only reason why our business is growing and that's the only reason why this piece of the industry is growing because it actually works the thing is is and we were talking about this before is that it's not as like benign um, and it does it's not as universal as conventional products so you really have to you know, hold somebody's hand through the process of finding the right thing for you. Um, You just brought up a great example, single source face oils. So if somebody comes into the store and they say they have very sensitive skin and, you know, they've tried a lot of products that don't work for them, we have a long conversation with them and we may end up, you know, recommending just a plain rosehip seed oil. And that's it. That's the only thing that's in the bottle. But that may work better for them than anything, any like quote unquote anti-aging or whatever product they've ever used in their life because, it, it's just like food. Once your body finds something, your skin is your largest, it's an organ, it's your largest organ. Once your once it finds something that it really likes, it's going to make it glow and it's going to, it's just, it's going to make it thrive. So what we're in the business of doing is, um, is matching people to the right ingredients and products for them. And that's how we believe we're going to make the ultimate biggest change, um, not just in the industry, but just with people's health, right? And and wellness and happiness and everything is because like you you should you deserve to use products that are healthy for you healthy for the planet but actually make you confident and make you glow so right and as i think it's similar to food in that there's no one diet for everybody right. and we're all a makeup of you know trillions of microbes yes. that all interact with different foods and pro- and ingredients differently and so you know I, that's why i don't really subscribe to like any one Same. diet for anything or Although like are I've you paleo are yeah. you this are you that <laughs> and i am sort of subscribed to a general way yeah. of doing things and i and i do believe in diets for like therapeutic reasons right yes. like you have an autoimmune condition well it's likely that you may want to try the autoimmune paleo diet first see how that goes mm-hmm. right but the same thing with skincare which i think a lot of people don't get is like oh, what's your favorite blank? And Mm -hmm. I think people just like to know. So I'll say, oh, it's, you know, I use this face oil, this or that. But that may not be the product for you. Like your skin is totally different from mine. So you have to play around with it. But that's different than the conventional space that we all grew up with and know so well. I mean, everybody in the entire country uses or used at some point Cetaphil, right? And because it's very benign, it doesn't doesn't do any harm. It doesn't do any good. It's just kind of there. 
Um, and so when people come in and we're recommending like very different textures and feels and everything in terms of face cleansers and moisturizers, it's, it's often a big undertaking for them. So you really need to hold somebody's hand to find the right thing for you. Otherwise, the last thing we want people to do is to say, oh, all of clean and natural skincare and beauty doesn't work because they tried something that they basically didn't have a great reaction to. So I really encourage everybody listening and watching and anything to, to find a friend or an expert or a retailer like us go or a Foley. brand, go to Foley, <laughs> find somebody to help you match you to the right products. Cause that is kind of the benefit. And then the, um, the issue with clean is that you really need to, you need some help in finding the right one for you. And also just, if you are really busy and want to just order some things online and, yeah. you know, I always say done is better than perfect. Exactly. So if you've been putting off <laughs> cleaning, you know, cleaning up your makeup act or your skincare act because you want to go talk to somebody about it at length and it's been years, like just order some stuff, right. you know, try it out. Let's well, say we have quizzes on our it. site too. You can take yeah. the quiz on Folate, yeah. but just, you know, start the process yeah. because one foot in one direction is better That's than true. no feet in That's any true. directions. And also half the things or 75% of the things may be exactly what you needed. Yeah. And all you have to do is worry about a few tweaks, you exactly. know, exactly. but at least you started the train in the right direction because That's a good point. every day that goes by that you're still putting the stuff on is like, you know, come on, make, it's make like when you run out of something, you should buy a new version in, you know, in a cleaner option. So exactly. Like don't go back to something that you already know is not. But getting educated and knowing that you need to make the switch is the biggest battle, I think, for most people, which is why it's so great we're having this conversation today. Right, right. And hopefully some people are going to listen. I want to talk about the policy side of this because to me, the fact that there is so little consumer protection in the skincare and makeup space drives me insane. And I know it gets you super fired up too. Yeah. So we should talk about that. And you live and breathe this, you know, more than I do, a lot more than I do about the policy side. So I know that uh, Diane Feinstein, who's a Democratic senator from California, as well as Susan Collins, who's a Republican senator from Maine, introduced the Personal Care Product Safety Act to the Senate um, in March of 2019. Mm -hmm. So I was excited by this, but there's a lot behind the scenes that you know about. So, you know, Folane was one of the, on the list of companies that supports this bill. Mm -hmm. And I know that you went down and lobbied uh, mm -hmm. Congress in 2017 for it. But what's the status of this bill? Are there other bills? What's really going to happen? Like, just give it to me straight. I know it's going to be depressing, but give it to me straight. Yeah, I know it, it, it kind of the answer is unfortunately kind of depressing. And, and I'll just say that as like a public policy major, as somebody who was willing to commit my life and career to making change to these types of things on the Hill, I just I couldn't do it because it was so frustrating and depressing because it just moves, it moves so slowly. So I think that the only way that we're going to get these bills to move through Congress faster is by continuing to raise awareness and educate through Folane, through things like this. Um, because the only reason why the Feinstein Collins bill, which is a good, a good one is up right now is because, um, because they, you know, people are, the Congress, Congress is starting to feel more pressure than ever on this topic. Um, and so obviously it's a huge, this is a huge industry and it creates so many jobs. So there are still a lot of issues with that bill. So one example um, that I brought up earlier is that I think it only reviews five ingredients a year, uh, which is just like not okay. <laughs> First of all, it hasn't been passed yet. So like, let's just get it passed, right? Um, and that's going to take a while in and of itself because it continues to get punted, punted, punted. Um, but then if it does pass, you know, it will only um, have five ingredients a year up for the FDA to review, which by the way is kind of, that would be a lot because they don't really have a staff or team dedicated to this. So it doesn't include like bringing in more team members to do this. That's why it's only five ingredients a year. But that's not okay because thousands and thousands of ingredients exist and come onto the market every single, right, single year. Say, tell people for yeah. reference how many are yes, coming in because silly. five is like, okay, if it's, it's silly, ten. but if it's thousands, I it's, mean, it's silly. It's a drop it's in silly. the bucket. Yeah, yeah, it's a drop in the bucket. Um, other things that it does that, that would be really positive um, was that it uh, would require product recalls. So um, 
So I'm sure some people listening or watching it remember about the issue with when hair care years ago and it was making um, all of these customers go bald and basically they weren't required to do anything because there is no requirement for companies to have a formal product recall right now in the US. So that's a really positive thing that the bill would do. Um, what else would it do? Um, it would require a certain element of um, standards for manufacturing, um, like GMP, good manufacturing processes and, and, and other things um, around that territory. There are a lot of really good things about the bill, but again, I ultimately just, I'm super frustrated because it takes so long for these things to move. Um, California has been making the most progress per usual, <laughs> um, in terms of legislation. Um, there's a really awesome bill right now up um, in California um, for uh, fragrance transparency. And we were talking earlier about all of the issues with fragrance. Um, it would basically require disclosure of what's inside of it. That would so, be huge. Yeah, so, so huge. So, so that would be a really great thing. They also have Prop 65, which um, talks, I mean, about all t different types of uh, consumer products, but beauty is obviously included in that um, and requires a certain element of ingredient disclosure as well. So um, while the U.S. isn't making the progress that we won, um, California is making a lot of progress. And I, and I think that um, obviously products that are sold on e-commerce, like, you know, you have to fit the California standards. So it would be great if they continued to move the needle and move, move things forward. We're not going to be able to do it maybe on the policy side for now, which is really, um, I mean, we might, we might be able to, if people continue to demand better, you know, right. And that's what I was going to say. Like, yeah. what can we as consumer advocates do? Vote with your dollar. Right. Yeah. I was, that's yeah. basically what I've learned is that, you know, um, industry moves so much faster than government. So think about the organic food movement, right? Yeah. Like they didn't require that all foods be made organically and maybe that will never happen, but the amount of food that's now being grown organically or that's available in different areas um, because of consumer pressure mm -hmm. to they want to buy it and mm -hmm. so all of these different retailers walmart and costco mm -hmm. costco is one of They're the, biggest, the biggest organic yep. retailers out there yep. um, and so that all happened fairly quickly when you look at when the pressure really yeah. um, started started um, being mounted and that really came from awareness and education so i think if we do the same things on the beauty and skincare side and people are saying this is crazy i don't want this then some of these more national retailers will exactly have to right. respond and Bolain will just take over the world and then we'll have you guys to go that. buy that but that's why i decided after you know it, so discovering this in 2008 starting the blog in 2009 then I went to business school after that to try and work on a plan for this. And ultimately, that's why I decided to open a re retailer as opposed to a brand, because as a retailer, you have the ability to set a policy and a standard for many brands. And so basically what I spent a long time doing was figuring out with environmental health experts, scientists, chemists, what our standard was going to be and what ingredients we weren't going to allow in within those four walls of the stores. Um, and what ingredients we were going to allow and, 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 and even from there, how we are going to set the standard for performance because the products have to actually work and do what they claim to. So, um, so that basically gave as a retailer, it gives us the ability to set a standard that in the absence of, a you know, a USDA organic, right, which the food industry is so lucky to have, um, but also isn't perfect in so many ways. Um, it gave us the ability to set our own standards. So, so at least consumers can know that when they walk into our store or go onto our site, everything's been vetted and meets that standard. I love that. And that was actually one of my questions today. Like, how, how did you even start that? And is there a way to kind of sum up in, you know, um, less than a minute what your standard is or not really? It's very complicated, I'm no, sure. No, I mean, I think our standard really is safety and performance. And so, the safety side is guided by a restricted substance list that we built, um, again, with a bunch of green chemists, environmental health experts, policy experts, um, and we, it was the first of its kind in the beauty-specific space. Obviously, Whole Foods had their whole body standard, but ours was very different because of a few different reasons. But um, So anyhow, so we have that, our safety standard. And then um, basically we say that everything needs to come from a need. So we don't over assort in our store. So we're extremely curated. To give you an example, we don't carry any full brands portfolio of products. We carry what they're best at making. Because again, the whole entire point of Folane is to make it as easy as possible to um, switch to and stick with clean products. 
So, um, so basically after you meet the safety standard and criteria, uh, you basically have to meet a really pretty stringent performance criteria. Um, and that's, that's the very short version of it, Gosh, but it's like all on our US site. Open of getting yeah, your brand exactly, into a retailer. Exactly. I like, that's a really good way of 12 it. rounds, but you're in. <laughs> yeah. I wish there was a full aid approved on like in other places too, because you know, most places don't like have that idea. a uh, vetting process right. whatsoever. It's a and very, very They're just saying like our clean beauty section and you go over there and to who? That's who, clean who, washing who, at its finest. Who, who says, you yeah. know, and uh, so I don't trust any of that. I'm only yeah. using, you know, apps and my own research yeah. and you guys, but um, I think that in, you know, lots, lots of parts of the country, that's the only option they have in certain places like a Dwayne Reed or, yep. a, you know, CVS. That's really We want to get into it. those parts of the country, not necessarily with our stores, but we just need to, with our education, with everything, because that's, that education is what moves the needle ultimately. Yeah. I think awareness and education yeah. is the pre precursor to every major yes. movement that's ever happened yes. in the whole world. So whether we're doing it with beauty or yeah. politics or whatever, yeah. it's uh, super important. And obviously why I do what I do yeah, too. I You're talking about performance, mm -hmm. the best performing clean products mm -hmm. that you are sort of surprised they work even better than you know the conventionally made ones. We have serums that have you know, glycolic acids and things like that in there, which um, are all from naturally derived ingredients, but they can they can nourish your skin, refine your skin, and actually make your skin look just as glowy as it would if you were using a conventional product. Um, you just have to find the right ones that fit your skin, where you are, and your lifestyle and everything right. else like that. And I'll add, because I buy it at Folane, that the Ilia like, lipstick. Oh, good. I'm wearing that right I, now. I, do, yeah. I think yeah. you're wearing it <laughs> the same shade. Yeah. Um, I've always um, had a little bit drier lips, mm -hmm. and I've always found that an actual lipstick was not moisturizing enough, so I've just used chapstick. I should stick. have put that question right back on you. That's Yeah, that's and great. So that one has always surprised me. At, like This is actually even better than a conventional lipstick, which tended to usually like dry out my lips. Yeah. But then I also don't like the feeling of lip gloss. So mm -hmm. I'm really surprised and delighted by... Well, because they're based in real ingredients. So they're based in cocoa butters and shea butters. And like I think there's a castor oil in the Ilia lip. It's oh, tinted lip conditioner. And you eat what you put on your lips. So it's that much more important. Right. I was just going to say, um, somebody was telling me to do a castor oil pack for something. And I haven't yet. But now I can just say, well, the lipstick it's I wear is giving lipstick. me all my castor oil. So no it's need perfect. to. Check that box. <laughs> Last but not least, we haven't even talked about the fact, because of course, Wellby is more focused on the health side of the yeah. story, but the fact that you are you know, a very busy entrepreneur oh. as well, who's got to think about your own wellness as you're going mm -hmm. through this you know, um, real crusade to get um, cleaner products across the nation and maybe the world. Um, but focusing on you a little bit. So you're the mom of two little ones, yeah. I think two under Three? Uh, yeah. Two under three. Three year old and a one year old. Which is just amazing. And you've got, what, 30 employees at this point or more than 50 that for sure? Or... Probably, yeah, around 50 right yeah. now. Yeah. So that's just like a kind of a lot Across of Across all the stores. Because we have six stores. That's why. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So just for, you know, for people who are interested in actually going to one of your stores. So you're in DC. We're, yep. Yep. In DC, in Boston, in New York, in Seattle, and in Dallas. Awesome. Yeah. Um, and so, Obviously, people are curious, like, uh, you have access to the best products all the time. What are you always using? For uh, myself? For yourself. And I know you're probably using a lot of things, but just kind of your, like, everyday stuff. Okay. That's a really hard question because I'm always testing new things to bring in. Right. Um, and I also am just a product junkie, or so not, I use a lot of things. Or not <laughs> the brands necessarily, because I'm sure you're always trying different brands. Yeah. Um, but just kind of like the actual Products. product. Yeah. At night, I have a much more involved routine than in the morning. So um, at night, your skin has the chance to kind of like regenerate and absorb nutrients from products. So I invest in a longer routine um, and more products at night. And then in the morning, just you're exposed to the environmental stuff in the air, you're exposed to sunlight, you sweat, um, all of those things. So I literally just wash my face with water in the morning um, to not undo all the good goodness that the products at night did. And then also just because, and then I'll just literally put on a face oil and a usually a sunscreen in the morning, super basic. And then I, I like makeup, so I'll wear some of that sometimes. Um, and then at night I do a lot of stuff. <laughs> do you really want to know? I'll tell really you. I'll, do, I'll go, I'll go rapid yeah. fire. Okay. 
So um, I'll, I'll usually use two cleansers. So I'll start with an oil or balm cleanser to remove, remove my makeup, but also because it's a really nice experience. Um, and then I'll use another gentle cleanser to actually clean my skin. Then I'll use a toner, um, which helps oils and moisturizers absorb in better. Um, in the clean beauty space, it's really important. Then I'll use an oil um, and then I'll usually use a serum and then I'll probably do an eye cream or cream or something like that on top. You know, when you said you use a lot of products, that that's kind of, there's only a few more that you use that I, so really okay. I think that's a normal, oh, good. maybe somewhat of a normal woman's like night yeah. routine. I, it I, feels very indulgent to be honest because that is that is my time for myself. It is insane during the day. I'm just like, I feel like I'm sprinting on a treadmill, you know, between working and, and everything with our kids and then, you know, trying to exercise, doing every, I'm literally sprinting on a treadmill. I, when I go into the bathroom and shut the door to do my evening skincare routine, that is like kind of the most meditative moment I have to myself. So I think I really indulge in all of those steps. So maybe I think that there, that there's more involved than there is. Um, cause that's my, kind of my special time for myself as cliche as that sounds, no, but that's I get that. really important. I get that completely. And it is, I usually have a couple minutes in my bathroom before I get in bed yep. alone and I do a little bit less than you, but it is also this moment where I find myself slowing down finally mm -hmm. and f like feeling my fingers on my yep. face and actually the being in my body yeah. for the maybe the first time all day, yeah. which is terrible, um, but super important to just kind of uh, realize that you're a human being yes. and that you know, feel yourself and yeah. not just operate, you know, drinking from a fire hose and, yes. um, you know, out of consciousness, as they say, right? So besides the skincare products, um, we have a, something that we ask everybody that we've interviewed at WellBe called the Get WellBe mm -hmm. series. So essentially just understanding what your absolute can't miss practices that you do to keep yourself well every day. And this can be one thing, two things, three things, whatever. I mean, most people, you know, don't have that many um, that they won't miss. You know, it's the stuff that's really important to them. They know it works mm -hmm. for their mental well-being or their immune system support or whatever. So for starters, I get WellBe with my evening skincare routine every single night. That's, I mean, table stakes for me. Um, it's the moment that I take for myself to close the door and um, it's meditative, it's indulgent, um, and I have to do that every single day. I also get WellBe by um, stretching and taking a moment to myself in the morning um, where it's just me. So kind of that's the beginning and end of the day where I have like a time where it's just I mean, when you have a team and you have kids and you have everything, there's a lot of moments where you're surrounded by, by others. And I need to have a moment where I'm taking deep breaths and focus on only that. Um, and those are my two moments. That's amazing. I was just going to say, I don't really know any moms that get a moment to themselves right when they wake up because somebody's usually screaming and you got to go get they them. They are. They are. And so I'll usually do it before they wake up or I'll do it right before I leave to go do something um, like to go to work or to drop off for school or something like that. But I'll always take a moment or sometimes it's after I drop them off. But yeah. Wow. Well, you're holding it together very well, and you look, your skin looks wonderful for anybody so that yours. can't see. Thank you. Well, I'm using almost all the light I stuff. I know. It looks good. Um, well, thank you so much for being here today, Tara. I admire you so much, as I mentioned, and I just hope that um, that 5% that you mentioned of the country that's actually yeah, we gotta change that. using clean products on their skin, um, really, you know, that number shoots up. And I think everything that you're doing with your awareness and education, as well as obviously being able to offer people these, you know, high performing, high quality, safe products um, is also the answer because yeah. if there's nothing else, you know, people are going to keep using yeah. the bad stuff. So that's all super important. And I think you're on the right track to make Thank some yeah. serious change. And now we'll just all have to get together and, you know, well, the infolane lobbying session and take on the big guns and see if we can't um, continue the policy side of it too, because I think um, that all it does is important. people continuing the conversation and then it'll get to the right places. So, yeah. And also I think people being empowered in their own health yep. and not waiting for someone to put a, this is banned or, you know, yep. um, a label or USD organic or whatever on something, but just to understand that, you know, at the end of the day, it's your body is the only home that you yes. have forever. Yes. And as we say, well, the, the hundred choices that you make a day are really your true healthcare. Um, and so when I you love that, thanks. <laughs>
So, you know, when you when you think about it that way, it's so much easier and you also can feel better that you'll be able to avoid the healthcare system simply by making slightly different choices exactly. every single day and not kind of getting into the mess of that if yeah. you, you know, emergencies aside, if you really understand that, you know, like you said, your skin is your biggest organ and every single thing that you put in it impacts it in so many different ways. Yes. So, awesome. Well, thank you so much again. Thank this you has so been much for having me. A true pleasure.